In our headlines for this evening, locally, Gender Affairs Division launches project to raise funds for Alexandra Hospital and the Department of Agriculture to hold final sale of meat products on Friday. The details are straight ahead. and welcome to the Nevis newscast for today, Thursday, May 21st, 2015. I am your presenter, Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The Social Services Department's Gender Affairs Division has launched a project to raise funds to purchase medical equipment for use at the maternity ward of the Alexandra Hospital. The effort, according to Gender Affairs Officer Wayne Maynard, presents an opportunity to honor mothers in a way that gives them lasting recognition. It is a chance for members of the community to make financial contributions in honor of mother figures. We're doing this under the theme, Motherhood a legacy of love and each contribution that will be given by individuals will allow their mother or female of uh, significance, someone worthy of such an honor, for their names to be engraved in a plaque that will be erected in a prominent place at the Alexandra Hospital. These contributions can be given in a number of different categories ranging from platinum which will be contributions made over uh, $500. Uh, diamond represents uh, contributions from $400 to $499. Uh, gold from $300 to $399. Silver from $200 to $299. And bronze from $100. To $199. The names of all mothers honored will be published locally. Any contributions from $25 and uh, up to $99, this will allow their names to be published in the local newspaper. But the whole idea is to honor our mothers in a, in a sacrificial, uh, in, a, in an indelible way that will uh, show that we certainly appreciate the impact that they have made over the years and in, towards our lives. The funds that are generated from this, uh, this honoring, so to speak, will be used to purchase very much uh, important and needed medical equipment at the Alexandria Hospital, in the, uh, uh, specifically an antipartum monitor, uh, which is a piece of equipment that will be used to, by doctors and nurses to, to monitor the fetal heartbeat during the pregnancy period. For more information, contact the Social Services Gender Affairs Division at 469-5521, extension 2045, or 2081. Contributions should be made on or before Friday, June 19, 2015. The Pan American Health Organization has issued a warning to persons in the Caribbean to take the necessary precautions amid an outbreak of the mosquito-borne Zika virus in Brazil. Brazil confirmed its first case of the Zika virus this month. The Zika virus is transmitted by the bite of an infected Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same mosquito which transmits chikungunya and dengue. The virus is similar to dengue with symptoms which include fever, joint and muscle pain, conjunctivitis, headache, weakness, rash, and swelling of the lower limbs. After the bite of an infected mosquito, symptoms usually appear following the incubation period of 3 to 12 days and last for 4 to 7 days. No deaths due to the Zika virus have been recorded worldwide to date. The warning follows meetings at the World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland. Persons are being urged to destroy mosquito breeding sites, including getting rid of old tires and containers in which water can settle, punching holes in tents before disposing, and covering large drums, barrels, and water tanks. 
On Friday, May 22nd, the Department of Agriculture will hold its fourth sale for Agriculture Awareness Month at the George Mowbray Hanley Market Complex in Charlestown. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Eric Evelyn, gave us the details about the sale, stating that it would be the final sale of meat and meat products. Um, this Friday we are continuing and this Friday is important. Why? Because we're doing our usual vegetables. We'll have our signature crop, which of course is the onions and a few other vegetables, sweet pepper and honeydew melons. And uh, this Friday as well will be your last opportunity during the month to stock up on your meat and meat products. Um, we've had meat um, two Fridays, the past two Fridays, and this Friday, the 22nd, will be the final Friday that we'll be having meat and meat products. On the sale will be mutton, beef, pork and other animal products that are normally available at the department's abattoir. Also, the usual onions, honeydew melons, sweet peppers and other fruits and vegetables will be available. Evelyn is imploring persons to take advantage of the sale. This Friday is the last Friday that you'll be able to, to purchase your meat at the public market in Charlestown. So once again, we are inviting you to come out and support us in our sale. Um, remember, you're getting good quality products at a good price. And uh, remember, we are, we are celebrating Agriculture Awareness Month under the theme, Strengthen the Drive Towards Food Security. We look forward once again to your support. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Eric Evelyn. Coming up, nationals invited to apply for scholarship of excellence from the government of Mexico. The details after this break. I was attacked by two men at gunpoint. They took my purse and everything. Now, I live in fear. Help us stop the madness. Tell 1-800-8477-TIPS. Welcome to Nevis. It's easy to believe that all Caribbean islands are the same until you visit Nevis. Nevis is the Caribbean of a bygone era. You will enjoy a most intimate vacation on Nevis. You're only a stranger here once. We offer exclusive and barefoot luxury stays. With only 400 hotel rooms, our island may be exclusive. But the warm, genuine and friendly welcome is just everywhere. We look forward to meeting you. Visit nevisisland.com. Taxes are the lifeblood of a nation. Feel good about what your tax dollars do in Nevis. As a responsible citizen, your tax dollars protect our environment. Pay your taxes on time. This message was brought to you by the Inland Revenue Department, Nevis. Be a responsible citizen. Welcome back. Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, contrasted the plight of prospective entrepreneurs with that of a successful banking system as he made his address at the Caribbean Development Bank CDB Governor's Meetings opening yesterday, May 20th, at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort. Prime Minister Harris, who is also the current chairman of the board of the CDB, said too many people have no money to take care of themselves and their families, yet the banking system in the OECS is overflowing with cash. Concomitant with a hollow cry of limited investable opportunities in the face of young men and ladies buzzing with ideas but no cash. Ready for prime time in vibes in dance hall, poetry, arts, crafts, culture, videography, production, sports and entertainment. He encouraged banks to finance entrepreneurial endeavors. It is perhaps here that a development bank must bring a new focus. 
new attention and new resources to help to pursue a people-centered path of diversification in which a new local entrepreneurial class is nurtured and supported. Prime Minister Harris advised access to low-cost financial resources and technical expertise remain the backbone for achieving the sustainable development agenda for the Caribbean region. In this regard, the potential for public-private partnerships need to be seriously explored to play a role in enabling a sustainable and scalable financial access. He encouraged the bank to find soft resources to be made available to development banks for support to farmers, fishers, hairdressers and truckers. Many of the small entities that he said feel left out in the cold by commercial banks. General Manager of St. Kitts Craft House, Austin Weeks, recently spoke to the impact a small enterprise exhibition could make for craft producers who run small businesses in St. Kitts and Nevis. Weeks was responding to remarks by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Colin Doerr, who said he hopes that a small business exhibition, which may come off later this year, will showcase some of the products coming out of a workshop on intermediate leather craft for arts and craft producers. Weeks says such an initiative could only serve to motivate craft producers to improve the quality of their work. Addison will have the opportunity to get, uh, uh, display their stuff. And in, in the competition is great really because we um, we only saw what people know what we produce. Even the local in St. Kitts Davis, they're not aware of what, what's being done in the Federation. You know the craft as thing is so many people don't know what we produce, all we have a website, we have marketing and so forth, but still locals somehow have the, the um, always have that urge to buy something overseas, feel like it's superior because it's overseas and it's good to have this uh, exhibition from time to time, even more exhibition, maybe one in Singh, it's one in Davis, because very good exposure for the artisans and it will give them the confidence really. Once this stuff goes on on sale and so forth, they can, they go in confidence and just keep producing better, better work. The Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, sponsored workshop is being facilitated by Amica Antrobos of Barbados, who encourages governments to support small enterprise development. In the Caribbean, the governments don't like to support small business, especially when you're doing craft. And if you look in the room today, everybody in here have on a pants, a shirt, a belt, and shoes. Who make them? The craft people. And if we don't make them, they can't go to their big jobs that they have. So I hope that the government here assists the small business in your country. Well, the world is turned to a recession, and people is getting laid off every day. And when they get laid off, they turn back to small business and craft. So if the governments of the Caribbean have a vision, give the people the funds before that they can move further up the ladder and hire other people in the workshop. The Leather Craft Workshop, which will conclude tomorrow, is being funded by the CDB's Caribbean Technological Consultancy Services Network and the Nevis Island Administration's Small Enterprise Development Unit. Nationals of St. Kitts and Nevis and other nationals of the member states of the Association of Caribbean States, ACS, and CARICOM are invited to apply for the 2016 Scholarships of Excellence from the Government of Mexico. Five scholarships are being offered to nationals of ACS member states to pursue doctoral research degrees with special emphasis on tourism, transport, and natural disasters, while 15 scholarships are being offered to nationals of CARICOM member states to pursue master's, doctoral and research degrees with special emphasis on engineering, health, biotechnology, genomics, mechatronics, nanotechnology, the environment and Spanish as a second language. The deadline for submission of applications with all the required documents is Tuesday, September 1st, 2015. Information on the call for foreign students will be available on the website of the Mexican Agency of International Cooperation until Monday, August 31st, 2015. That's it for tonight's edition of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing. Good night.